Hello from Portland, Oregon. My name is Aaron Shear, and in this video we're going to use NIAWR Microwave Office to perform a transient circuit analysis on this circuit here. Let's take a moment to look at the circuit. At the top left we see that this node is held at 12 volts with respect to ground. We have a 10 ohm resistor, a 120 ohm resistor to ground, 20 ohm resistor here, a single pole single throw switch here that we'll talk about in a moment, 30 ohm resistor and then this 100 millihenry inductor to ground and we're interested in the current flowing through this inductor I sub L. With this switch it's open for time is less than zero and so for time is less than zero you're going to have a steady state DC current that's flowing through this inductor. It is at steady state and it's going to be at some initial value, the current will be at some initial value. At time is equal to zero, the switch closes, which shorts out this node, and this current is going to decay exponentially to its final value, which is zero. And we're interested in using microwave office to plot this current with respect to time, for T is greater than zero. Now this circuit here with the 30 ohm resistor and the 100 millihenry inductor, at time is equal to zero and beyond, it's cut off effectively from this 12 volt source and the current's going to decay um, with the time constant of L over R, which is 100 millihenry over 30 ohms, and that's about 3.33 milliseconds. It's important to calculate or approximate, if you can, the time constant because when you're performing a transient analysis, it's always a good idea for your stop time to be on the order of maybe five time constants because that's when you know about five time constants is when this value is going to take on a steady state value which in this case the current will be zero in about five time constants. Okay so we're going to open up our design environment and when this opens it should start a new project. Now let's click here, right click on circuit schematics in the project tree and then left click on new schematic. Let's just call this transient, I'll call it transient, whatever you want to call it. Okay so now we have our brand new circuit schematic, like a blank canvas that we can add our circuit elements to. So at the bottom left here, look at this element tab, left click on that, and then we're going to add, let's say, our resistors first. So under circuit elements, we left click on this little plus sign next to lumped elements, and then click on resistor, and then find the model we want, which is resistor closed form, and drag it over here. This is our, our standard lumped element resistor that obeys Ohm's law perfectly from DC to light. Click on it. I'm going to hit Control C and then Control V to paste. Control V to paste another one. Control V to paste another one. Click. Control R. Use mouse. Rotate. And then connect everything up. It's at our DC source. So we want to go to sources, DC, DCVS, drag it over and connect it and maybe clean that up. And let's not forget our inductor and that's under lumped elements again. Click on inductor and our model is inductor closed form so drag it over. Click control R, rotate, connect. Let's add some grounds. Grounds up here, there's a ground there. Control C, Control V, Control V. And then let's put these values in. So this is going to be 12 volts. This thing's going to be 10 ohms. This resistor is going to be 120 ohms. This resistor is going to be 20 ohms. This one's 30 ohms. For our inductor, the default units we can see are nano Henry. We want to change that to milli Henry. So let's go to Options, Project Options. Click on Global Unit tab. Here, inductance is nano Henry. Let's change the default to milli Henry. And while we're at it, let's change the seconds, excuse me, the time from nanoseconds to seconds. 
and then click OK. And now we can see that it changed to millihenry. Click on this, change it to 100. Kind of the hard part in this now is to find where is the switch. So the switch element is under libraries. So libraries is under circuit elements. Circuit elements, then left click on this plus sign under libraries. Click on this AWR website under that. And then it's under applack. Click on applack again, and there's our switch. Switch underscore AP. Bring that over, and there's our switch. And now let's put some grounds in there. So ground here, to ground that. And we're going to connect up node 1 right there. Like that. Okay, the way the switch works is if you have a low voltage with respect to ground at this node, at node 3, the switch will remain open. If you put a high voltage, like 5 volts, at node 3 with respect to ground, the switch will close, and in this case that will short this node out. So we want to put a voltage source that is 0, at time is less than 0, and then jumps up to say 5 volts at time is equal to 0 and then stays high for the remainder of our analysis. Such a source can be found if we click under circuit elements, click under sources, AC, AC underscore V, the dynamic AC voltage source, and bring that in, just like that. Let's put a ground here, and we want to connect this to 3. Make sure this node here, where that lasso is, is not connected to that resistor. This is connected directly to port 3 of the switch. This thing's whole goal in life is to control the switch. Double click. Under this specify type, it says value. It's right. The default is use doc freaks. Let's click it to transient only period. We want our period to be some time in seconds that's much larger than our stop time. Our stop time is going to be, I think, 0.02 seconds. So let's change this to 2 seconds, some large time. The high value is going to be 5 volts. It's going to start at 0 volts. And our pulse width is how long that this voltage source is going to be at the high value, at 5 volts. And we want it to be at some time that's much longer than the time of our transient analysis so that it just the switch stays closed for the entire time of our analysis. Let's just make it one second and click. Let's save our project. I'll just save it as an example. And everything looks to be in order. Now if I just run the analyze button here, or press the analyze button, nothing's going to happen. We haven't told Microwave Office that we want to look at the current through this inductor, nor have we set the start and stop time for the transient analysis. So to begin telling the software what to do. We go to the bottom left, click on this project tab, and let's click on graphs, um, not circuits, maps, graphs, and right click, new graph. Click on, we want to create a rectangular graph. And now we're going to right click, click on new measurement. And then our measurement type will be nonlinear, current, there's a bunch of different measurement types, measurement options within that, and we're going to go all the way down to I time, which is a time domain current. Our data source is going to be transient, or whatever you name the circuit schematic. Our simulator is going to be Applac Trans. And now we need to tell it right here the component that we're actually going to be taking this measurement um, by. So let's click on this box. And then click, double click on this uh, inductor, and there it is, telling you that it's inductor L1. And we can hit OK. And now let's click on Tools, not Tools, Options, Default Circuits, Circuit Options. And then you'll see this Transient tab. Click on that, and then remove this Use HB settings. And here's where you can set the start and stop time. So. We're going to have our start time at 0 and our stop time to be 0 0.02 seconds. And our step will make it 1e to the negative 
five. Say, okay. I think everything is set up. Now let's hit analyze. It's going to simulate. And this is a plot of the current through the inductor from time is 0 to 0 0.02 seconds. One other thing, going back to the schematic. If you look at this inductor very closely, in fact, all these elements, you'll see this little diagonal line there. What that does is it tells, it tells the software that this is what you want the reference to be, meaning when we plot the current, we're finding the current that's flowing through this element entering the terminal with this little line. So if we just rotate this, let's see, and delete that, delete that. I'm just going to turn this thing around. I'm not going to change anything else. Turned around like that. Now the line's on the bottom. When I re-simulate it, what we should see is the current being flipped. It should be going from negative, whatever value this is, 180 about, to 180 milliamps to zero. So let's click on that. And sure enough, it was the same plot as before, but flipped to be negative. And all we did was flip this inductor around because it's finding the current that's flowing through this element, entering the terminal with this little line. But the current, if that's your positive direction, then the current is, is negative with respect to that direction. So you get negative current. All right, and that is the basics of performing a transient circuit analysis using microwave office.